on one spring morning in 1936, Albert Speer and Adolf Hitler met at a stretch of autobahn in Berlin. They discussed many things while looking at the autobahn. A motorway or highway construction project storming through Germany with 130,000 workers under the command of Fritz Tote. Hitler turned to Speer, his chief architect, and said, I have one more building assignment to give out, the greatest of all. Speer knew nothing of what that remark meant at that point in time. Three months later, Hitler unveiled to Speer a plan for the city centre of Germania. The project was initially in the hands of the mayor of Berlin, Julius Lippert, but Hitler had dismissed him as incapable of governing a metropolis, and even more incapable of understanding the symbolism that Hitler wished to bestow upon Germania. Lippert was overlooked in favour of Speer, who was entrusted with the task of planning Welthauptstadt Germania, or World capital Germania, the new name that would be bestowed upon Berlin. The plan was simple in theory. Germany was to be a hyperpower. Germania of the German Empire would be comparable to Rome of the Roman Empire. Paris and London would be dwarfed in size and magnitude by Germania, the capital of Germany and the cultural hub of the world. On the northern side, near the Reichstag, there was to be a huge meeting hall, the Volkshall, governed by medieval conceptions. Ulm, Hitler argued, had a cathedral which could house 30,000 people despite Ulm, the city, being inhabited by half that amount of people. Similarly, Vauxhall would fit 150,000 people. St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome would have fit into the structure several times over. The dome would be 825 feet in diameter. To balance this structure, to the south there would be an Ark of Triumph commemorating the dead from the World War. Hitler was reviled by the wretched and undignified monument erected by the Republic before him. The Ark would be 400 feet high and the names of the dead would be chiselled into the granite of the structure, all 1.8 million of them. At least that would be a worthy monument to our dead, Hitler said. Separating these two structures, there would be a boulevard, 130 yards wide and 5 miles long. While the purpose of Paris's boulevards was to improve traffic circulation, this one was clearly designed for public display. Hitler produced two small cards with sketches of the structures. I made these drawings 10 years ago. I've always saved them because I never doubted that someday I would build these two edifices. Speer was in awe at the magnitude of the project. He was startled less at the grandiosity of the project and more at the time at which they were produced. While Hitler spoke of international reconciliation in public, these structures spoke of imperial glory, glory which Germany could only procure through war. Look at Paris or even Vienna. Hitler had wanted to emanate Vienna's monuments. Most notable was the Viennese City Hall. Here, Vienna is worthily represented. By contrast, consider the Berlin City Hall. We will give Berlin a more beautiful one than Vienna's, no doubt about that. Hitler was also impressed by the promenades that had opened up Paris's city centre, creating the modern ideal of Paris. Haussmann, the architect of Paris's boulevards, was, in Hitler's eyes, the greatest city planner in history. However, Hitler had hoped that Albert Speer and Germania would surpass Haussmann and Paris. After occupying France on the 28th of July, 1940, at 6am, Speer rode with Hitler along the promenades of Paris, admiring its architecture as junior architects around them took notes. It has been my life's dream to see Paris. Isn't Paris beautiful? Hitler affirmed to Speer. Hitler mused ideas of erasing Paris, but concluded, when we are ready with Germania, Paris will be but a shadow. Welthauptstadt Germania, of course, never was. Five years after Hitler and Speer wandered through Paris as conquerors, Hitler was dead, Speer was arrested, Germany was broken, and Berlin, the city for which Hitler had so much ambition, was in ruins. The Berlin that the war had created was not uniting Europe, but dividing the planet.